The new era of the Seahawks has begun, and it began with Jamal Adams, Quandre Diggs, and Will Disley being cut. Welcome back to another episode of Seattle Sports Show, where we love Seattle pro sports. I'm your host, Mikey, and we are here to talk about the breaking news that happened today with Jamal Adams, Quandre Diggs, and Will Disley all being released from the Seahawks. This is big news. I mean, this really is the beginning of the new era now. It really has begun i mean pete carroll walked out the door or they kicked him out the door they brought mike mcdonald in but that didn't really feel like the start of anything new yet because nothing else had really changed they had to figure out what else was going on but now that the roster moves are actually happening it feels like the new era has truly begun now they have evaluated players evaluated contract situations and they have started to make moves now by no means do i think this is the end of the moves that have been made that are going to be made but um this is the start and we'll see how (laughs) the dominoes fall from here but uh yeah let's you know let's kind of uh go through it i guess i mean uh, I saw the news first broke uh, from uh, Tom Pelissero on 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 Twitter or on X, whatever you're calling it now. That uh, you know, all three players were released, uh, and it's a uh, it, it it's you know it, it it's a big deal. It's it's big moves. We're talking about. Um, one big moves because these were three key players uh in the past uh and were players that were supposed to be key players you know uh i mean just think about how good Diggs has been for you for a number of years how solid disley has been for a number of years and uh think of how jamal adams when he first got here, it was looking like he was worth everything that you gave up to get him and worth the contract you gave him. And just unfortunately, due to all the injuries, uh, it didn't pan out. So these were three players uh, that um, were heavily relied upon, featured, or meant to be featured uh, in the uh, previous era. And uh, with those cuts, though, we're talking about big, big, big savings on the cap space. So let's talk about um, kind of how uh, this all works. I mean, w- with the with these cuts uh you're you're saving big uh on on each of these players will disley himself clears 7 million dollars uh we're talking about uh releasing digs uh saved 11 million dollars and then um Adams, only six million dollars, uh, so six point one million. So, in total, they they're saving twenty four million, twenty four point one million in cap space this year. Now, all three players 
are released immediately, right now. So if you don't know how this whole contract and free agency and all this situation works, you can, again, you can cut a player, but you can cut him immediately, or you can cut the player and designate it as a post-June 1st cut. Okay, so now if there's becomes a post June first designation for the for the release, then you do not get the cap space until after June first. But what that does is that it splits the dead cap that that player would uh, count against you. So you'd split the dead cap. Half of it goes to this year. The ha- next half of their dead cap rolls over to the next year's salary cap. They chose to release everybody immediately, eating, you know, eating all of the dead cap space this year from all three of these players. Now, initially, you might think to yourself, why would they do that? Because you could essentially have, uh, you know, a lot more money to spend this year if you did it. Well, when you do that, again, you're not technically releasing that player till June 1st, so that cap space doesn't come available until June 1st. So if you're looking to spend money now, then... um, Then that then then that's not that's not going to help you, you know. Free agency um, is getting ready to start in eight days from the time of this recording. Um, you know, actually, by by the time I have this uploaded, it's it's going to be past midnight. So we'll say seven days. Free agency is in a week. It's beginning in a week, and. Um, what it indicates to me that they would immediately release these players now is that they have players in mind. Mike McDonald, John Schneider, they have, you know, worked together. They've come together and decided these players need to be cut now, but there's also players that we want to go after right now. We don't want to wait for that money to come available until after June 1st. We need that money now because we have players we want to target and take care of in free agency. And, and, I mean, just alone, you have to think about what's going on with the Seahawks roster. Leonard Williams, you want to bring him back. You spend a second-round pick on him. And the, the, the level of play that he's played at, you want to keep him. Uh, we're talking about, you know, Mike McDonald did, does he want to keep Jordan Brooks? It has been known that, uh, or said now that yes, Mike McDonald and the Ravens organization, uh, they wanted to have Jordan Brooks in that draft. So does Mike McDonald, uh, have him on this roster now and say, yes, that is another player that is about to hit free agency as a Seahawks player that they do not want to let go and you know these kinds of cuts these moves can make it affordable for you to keep both of those players uh you know and then again free agency coming up uh we just cut two safeties but uh Geno Stone safety from the Ravens obviously already works really well in that Mike McDonald system. How well does it work? Well, I can tell you that this last season with Mike McDonald in uh, running his system in Baltimore, Geno Stone had 66 tackles uh, total, 44 solo, and 7 interceptions. That's the kind of production that you were wanting to get 
from Quandre Diggs and that you have gotten from Quandre Diggs in the past, but you were no longer getting. Uh, Gino Stone, only 24 years old. He'll be 25 uh, during this upcoming season, but he, he is hitting free agency. And uh, you are talking about uh, right now, if you go to spotrack.com, they are estimating that he is going to get somewhere around $7.2 million uh, per year uh, on a deal. That is about, we'll, we'll round, okay? We're going to round this up and we're going to say that's about four times less than what you're paying uh, Jamal Adams or Quandre Diggs. So if you can get a player who's younger, who's coming off a more productive year, and get them three to four times less than what you just cut, then, yeah, that is going to, you know, I could see that being um, a target that they want to go after in free agency, and they want that money now so that they're actually able to do it. Okay, so uh, to me, I think it's a very smart move to release all these players now and not do the, the post-June 1st designation um, because, yes, you do get more money, but you're, by the time that money becomes available, free agents, you're not, you're not going to have the major free agents you want. You don't, you don't want to be sitting on your hands waiting and hoping that the players you want... Uh, don't accept any other contracts for the next few months. You know, you, you don't want to tell Geno Stone. You don't want to tell Leonard Williams. You don't want to tell uh, Jordan Brooks, hey, guys, uh, don't go sign other contracts with other teams right now. I know they're offering you a lot of money, and it would be great to have that security and get that uh, right now. But just wait. We're, we're going to have money coming in a few months and and we can offer you a deal then that, that's not how it works <laughs> that's not how real life works if a if if a uh if a player is wanted by a team and they're being offered a lot of money by that team they're gonna go so the seahawks need to free up money now and they need to have it available to uh offer to the players that they want whether that's the their own free agents that they're wanting to keep, or if it's free agents uh, that are you know out there on the market that uh, they'd like to go after. So uh, to me, I, I think it looks so, like a really good move uh, to do it now. Uh, it's to me a great idea, also because again, you're not you're not pushing off any of that dead cap space into next season. Uh, you know, you're looking at a situation now where they can, uh, you know, again, it'll still be a very new coaching staff, uh, still very new into uh, getting, you know, retooling the team. And if there's more things that they feel they need to retool next season, they don't have to worry about um, tens of millions of dollars in, in dead cap going against the cap next year. It's all that's going to be free and they'll be able to use that to go after whatever free agents they need to go after next year. Or it gives them more flexibility to structure contracts this year so that, uh, you know, again, they can do signing bonuses so that they can do, um, you know, other cuts or whatever they need to do for next season and building team next season. I mean, when you're when you're a GM, you can't just think about it as the season that's right in front of you. You have to plan years in advance. So uh, to me, that's what John Schneider did with this move, and um, it, to me, it looks like a really smart move. Um, let's see. Um, I, I, I guess that's. All there is to tell you right now, that's that's the news with this. Um, it, 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 it's big moves. Like I said, I don't expect it to be the last of what we're seeing uh, out of moves with the Seahawks. Uh, 
before free agency starts again in just a week. We're looking at, you know, uh, Tyler uh, Lockett's contract. What does that look like? Um, you know, do, do, do they restructure him? Do they trade him? Like, what are they going to do with that big contract? Um, there's so many different ways <laughs> th this could go. Uh, and, and it's just not, uh, uh, Tyler Lockett there. There's other players, um, on, on, on this team that, uh, you know, still moves can be made with them. Uh, I mean, just looking kind of, uh, around the lot roster. I mean, what have you really gotten out of, um, Brian Monet at this point? You haven't, you haven't caught, you haven't gotten anything. Uh, and, um, there's $5 million now with, with him, uh, they do need to do a physical, uh, and if he is indeed still injured at this point, then you're talking about, you know, having to do some sort of settlement. And so maybe you wouldn't get all, you know, $5.3 million, um, that you could potentially save. You'd have to do like some sort of injury settlement with him and, uh, you don't, get to have it all but that is either way he he is an option uh-huh you know uh who else is like a pre-june um you know there there's a lot of players actually that uh they might decide that they just don't want <laughs> you know um that he cut enough of them it, it it adds up so uh we're, we're talking about the seahawks being able to free up a lot of cap space very fast uh if they want to uh i, I mean at this point they are sitting uh at about we'll, we'll call it we're, we'll just round it off we'll call it like 38 million dollars uh in cap space that they're sitting at about right now uh so they can easily uh, with just a couple more moves again, um, depending on what they want to do with Tyler Lockett, restructuring, redoing this, redoing that, whatever, you know, um, how they want to do that. Uh, talking about Monet, talking about, um, you know, any, any number of players that they want to go through and do this with, they, they can get themselves well over 40, maybe close to 50 or over 50 uh, million dollars in just uh, another couple moves. So there's going to be plenty of cap space for them to spend in free agency, plenty of cap space for them to sign whatever uh, players they need to sign in the draft for however many players they, they draft, especially since it's so much easier to do now and for them to plan for that uh, since uh, all the draft spots have a slotted amount of um, you know, uh, money that they're going to get. The, the, I, I like the plan of action so far. Um, you know, and, and we're going to see where this goes. I'm, I'm really excited about the future. Let me know what you felt when, uh, you heard about the news. I know Quandre Diggs and Will Disley are both big fan favorites. Um, you know, Adams not so much because he just didn't get to produce on the field or was hardly ever on the field for most of his time with the Seahawks, uh, unfortunately, due to all the injuries. And, um, yeah, so let, so let me know how you're feeling about that. Let me know, do you think it was a good idea to release them immediately or did you want to see them do the post-June 1st designation and save more money this year? Um you know, and if you do feel that way, I'd be curious to, to know why you would want them to do that. Like, um, you know, how big of a benefit do you think that really is? Yes, they could have more money for potentially trades during season or 
um, you know, signing free agents uh, in the middle of the season if they need to, but usually it doesn't cost that money. So I'd, I'd be curious to know why you would want, you would have wanted him to do that. Um, to me, I feel very good about it because it just kind of indicates to me that they have players that they uh, have in mind and want to go after in free agency. All right, so there you go. There is the Seahawks uh, cuts and uh that's gonna be the that's gonna be it for this episode um we just had a break uh you know or talk about that breaking news that we got earlier today so um you know make sure you hit the subscribe button the like button again comment let me know how you're feeling about it uh head over to uh you know apple Podcasts and subscribe spotify and follow uh, rate and review on those podcast versions and uh thanks for listening to the seattle sports show where we watch legends awaken so take cover because with the sea of sound you will rise you will see you will see us rise to reign supreme and win forever <laughs>